What's going on guys? Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking Whopper Ploppers. We all know what they are now. Most guys love them. We are going to tell you, I mean, everything you need to know from color selection, size selection, what the different sizes are for, why they work, when they work, down to tricks with your retrieve, tricks in your rigging, hook changes, all those things. And I'm gonna do my best to cover it as quickly as possible so you don't have to sit here forever. But we are gonna dive right into the Whopper Plopper. Tim and I just had the pleasure of uh, actually meeting Larry Dahlberg himself, the guy that, that gave us all the Whopper Plopper. And Larry has done so much for the fishing industry as a whole, it's incredible. This is just one tiny little thing he's done for us. Uh, but it's something tangible that we're all using. Uh, getting to pick his brain a little bit about the plopper was just amazing because it confirmed some things for us. It explained things that we'd experienced. Uh, it really was eye-opening. We're going to share some of that with you. But let's run through the sizes. We're going to start with the biggest. This is the 190, and odds are it's the one that you guys don't throw because it is gigantic. Uh, for size comparison, I think that's a 190. It's the big one. We'll give you links to everything in the video description, just like always. There's the tiny one, that's the 90 for size comparison. Uh, here's the, the new 110 for size comparison. Now, this guy is big. It's more of your like musky pike profile, but I'm gonna tell you right now that if you don't own one, you are blowing it. Uh, they get big bites. We throw this size a lot here on Clear Lake. I mean a lot and it gets the right bites, and it gets bit more than you would expect. Uh, it is not too big. The biggest difference between it and the others is it throws a deeper sound. And something that Larry explained to us is I was talking to him about a, one of, uh, an experience of my own where when I went to this size, I was catching smaller fish and less fish than if I was throwing the 130 size. And he was surprised by that, but what he said is each one has that unique sound profile and if you were fishing over a hard bottom, hard rock bottom, that sometimes this is too much sound because you're getting that reverberation back off that hard bottom. Um, he felt like this shined more over a soft bottom, a mud bottom, which made a world of sense and absolutely matched my actual experience on the water. Uh, I just hadn't figured out what my experiences were telling me and he just nailed it down. Uh, but that 190 is phenomenal. A quick tip with the 190, comes with heavy, heavy, heavy hooks. And they're great, they'll get them uh, if you're throwing it on a big, heavy swim bait rod. But if you're not, I take these off and I replace them with either a two-aught or three-aught uh, Owner 1X treble hook. Two-aught or three-aught, it's still a big hook, but it's a much thinner wire and for our bass, that's just fine. Uh, you get them on that hook and you can get them on a softer rod with that hook. Next size would be the 130. That's kind of our main bread and butter size. Now, color wise, let me pull another one out of the box here. Color wise, I know I saw one floating around. Oh, it's right in front of me. This color is called monkey butt. Here where we live, if I could only have one, that would probably be the one. Monkey butt is just a dynamite color. It's kind of like a a ghost minnow type color uh, and it is just deadly deadly but I've learned over the last few years that some of the colors that I've done the best with are kind of the oddball colors and I'm gonna give you a couple recommendations for that but just picking out some basics monkey butt is a must black is a must I want something in the white or uh, white or bone, a really solid color. So basically a clear, this is gonna sound so much like the frog video, it's not even funny. Clear, white, black, or chartreuse. Essentially a, a chartreuse type color. One of the gill type profiles. I keep it simple, my top water is across the board, whether you're frog fishing or spook fishing or whopper flopper fishing. White, black, and chartreuse are deadly colors. And then of course we add that ghosty or clear color here because it's an option um, and it's a deadly option. 
but keep your color simple but absolutely you need to be fishing across the sizes this is the 130 next is that 110 and size wise here it is next to a 130 and I'm gonna get into some quick little tricks with these two here in a minute but first we'll just run through the gear hooks stuck there you can see the 110 and the 90 have a different body shape. They have a deeper belly, a little bit more rounded. That was so that they could get away with a heavier wire front hook so that we could still fish a stout hook without that nose wanting to dive below the wave so it would still run flat. Because these baits run truly flat on the surface or, or at times even just a hair nose down, almost trying to bulge water and then that tail's back there, whop, 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 whop. Uh, but this bulge on the smaller sizes helps keep that head up so you don't have a bunch of submerging going on. And then the little guy, here's the 90 size. The 90 is a deadly smallmouth and spotted bass size or uh, my finesse fisheries, I throw a lot of that size, deadly. And again, chartreuse, white, black, and a clear color. It really is that simple. Now, a couple quick tips with these baits. Retrieve wise, standard retrieve is just a steady roll in that bait. Wop, 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 wop. You wanna get your speed, typically where I like to fish it anyway, is where my speed is at the absolute loudest. So if I'm running it too fast, it's like fluttering. If I go too slow, it's just like a wop, wop, wop. You'll find that perfect speed where it is loud. Whop, 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 whop. It sounds like an airplane trying to take off. I mean, it's loud. That is that perfect speed that you wanna run that bait at. Uh, deadly at that speed, and that's my standard. Chuck it out, cover water. And you've seen, you see, if you guys saw our underwater video, you see that they treat this bait unlike any other. Most of the time when we're throwing poppers, spooks, just about anything, They'll come up, the frog, they come up and they, they track that bait and they watch it and they study it and they follow it and then they commit or they don't. The whopper flopper, it's like that fish will sit still. Here comes that whopper flopper. And as it's passing them, they let it go. It's coming over the top. They let it go and then they turn and beeline intercept. There's no hesitation, full throttle, straight up, smash that bait very unique way that they eat this specific bait. It is deadly. Um, if you guys don't throw a Whopper Flopper yet, you need to, but I'm assuming that a lot of you already do. I'm gonna help you fine tune it. That's what we're trying to do for you. Um, a trick for you, a Whopper Flopper can destroy your line so, so fast because it's spinning. If you get any gunk in the joint at all, one piece of grass, instead of having the tail section spin, the body will begin to spin and, and your line will be shot. So something that you can do is add, an, and I recommend an owner because owner hyperwire split rings are strong. Add a number five owner hyperwire split ring and then a, that's a Spro power swivel to the front of that thing so that if that body starts turning, it doesn't just completely demolish your line. And I mean, you're on a straight retrieve bait. It does not matter that there's a little hardware out there in front, the fish is never gonna notice. That has saved my reels. Because seriously, if you're at the end of a bomber cast and you pick up a piece of grass and that thing spirals all the way to the boat, your line is shot. That will save you so many headaches. Now, of course, if you're throwing the little guys, you just downsize. You go to a either a number two or a number three split ring and a smaller swivel but makes all the difference in the world. Uh, second retrieve, just a quick tip for you. Again, if you watch the underwater video, you saw a clip in there where the fish was coming after that whopper plopper and then decided he was gonna let it go. And we stopped and went to the, the pop. Working it almost like a popper, just splash it and stop. Splash, stop, splash, stop. And got that fish to come up and commit like he was actually on a popper or a walking bait. Uh, if you're having a lot of fish follow but won't commit, you can do that because this is a floating bait. You can stop it, give it just a little pull and it'll just splash and then stop, splash, stop. The bigger sizes, especially the big, big one, I can't seem to get them to eat it doing that. 
but both the 90 and the 110, it's deadly. The 90 size, when you do that little pull, it sounds like a popper. I mean, it's it can almost replace a popper in a lot of circumstances if you're just barely splashing that thing. And then you can cover water back to the boat and pick up fish doing that too. Uh, but then the one the 110 is actually the one that you saw in the video. You saw the fish commit to that one right there. Uh, and it just murdered it on that little splash. It's just a way to get them to bite when they're a little funny. Uh, hooks, if you own some of the original Whopper Ploppers, they came with a pretty light wire hook. You need to replace that hook in my opinion. Uh, again, I replaced split rings too because I am paranoid and I don't want to lose fish. So I changed my split rings out to that owner hyper wire. I hooks, that's that original stock hook. I replace it with there's one, an owner 3X. You can see the difference there dangling. Much, much stronger hook, that owner 3X treble. Uh, or gamma cots or whatever you want, but this is literally the, the hook that I use for this particular bait. And it works extremely well. That said, uh, River to Sea has started changing their hardware. I'm trying to decide if that's owner or if that's their hardware. Well, these saltwater ones are for sure. That's their hardware. That must be too. Where'd it go? That must be their hardware hanging there. So they've actually gone to a stronger split ring and a stronger treble. So if you're buying a, a current bait off the store shelf, it's gonna have pretty stout hardware. So far, I haven't had an issue. I still get paranoid about split rings, even though I haven't had an issue. If I know I'm gonna be around giant fish, I change my split rings just so that I know that I know that I'm not gonna have a problem. Um, but the new hardware is fantastic and it really is a lot like an owner 3x hook it's got that little bit of a tipped in point so once you get those fish it really keeps uh keeps them pinned for you but that's a good option but if you're buying older ones or you've already got them in your box that owner 3x is deadly only other thing i'd really say is going back to colors there's basic colors but don't be afraid of some of the oddballs because a lot of times whopper ploppers are just sold out everywhere uh, and the only ones that are left are weird colors. I ended up picking up a bunch of those weird colors and discovering that I loved them. So just a couple bonuses for you. And again, I never know what anything's called. I think that one's called Yoda, but I could be wrong. Uh, in the video description, I'll link you to these oddball colors. But a couple that I want you to try is that one. And here's why. It looks hideous in your hand, right? It's like a matte finish, just really dull. It's not dull in the water. You stick in the water, it's see-through. Uh, and this is a, I mean, dynamite color for me. I've caught a ton of fish on that one. Both of these kind of odd green ones are deadly colors. And the other ones are gonna be red. Oop, let me get rid of that guy. I think that's red horse and it, that might be like Delta Craw or something like that. But either one of those, this is a solid color. It's kind of a clear color. When do I throw red? If you're throwing the Whopper Plopper and they are massacring it, if the fish are just committing suicide on that bait, go red. Uh, when the fish are in that, I mean, when they're seeing red, you know, when they're like a bull, when they're losing their mind coming unglued for that bait, if you switch to a red bait, you will typically get the angriest, largest fish in the bunch to come up first. So it doesn't hurt to have a red one in the box. I don't throw it very often. Like one out of every 15 times I'm on a Whopper Plopper bite does the red one even come out of the box. But when it comes out, I'm hunting for a big, big bite. Uh, only other thing I'll say, Whopper Ploppers come in both silent and rattle. Uh, this one's rattle. So is that one. That's a silent. There's a rattle, there's a silent. Don't worry about it for the most part. The only time that it's gonna matter, because when you're straight retrieving, uh, a lot of those rattles aren't going anyway. The key is that loud tail, whop, whop, whop. It'll overwhelm all those other sounds. So don't even worry about it, unless you're going to use that stop and go retrieve. If you're gonna stop and go, it doesn't hurt to pick you up one that rattles also, uh, because that rattling, when you're doing that retrieve, you do hear those rattles and it's a different profile and you might find that one is working better than the other on a given day. But for the most part, 
don't even worry about it. If the color you want is only available in one, buy it. Uh, the tail is really the critical sound. Uh, also, the tails can get a little haywire. Uh, you know, like with swim baits, if the tails get crazy, we dunk them in boiling water and you can reshape them. If your tail starts going, if it loses that wop, 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 if it's a more dull sound, you probably had it laying in a box and it got flattened out. You can literally stick the back end of this bait in boiling water and get it hot and reshape it with your hand and stick it in ice water and get that wop, wop, wop back in that bait. You'll get that sound back from a bait that you think you need to retire. Just some quick tips for you guys. The Whopper Flopper is a killer bait. You know you need to be throwing it. They've, they came out in like 2011 or something. They're not a new bait. We've been throwing them here for five years at least. Uh, they have crushed it on the West Coast. Absolutely crushed it. We've all caught giant fish on it. But last year it really started taking off, spreading east. You guys are still discovering it out there. Uh, but we've had a lot of time to fine tune these baits. Spent a ton of time catching fish on them. So hopefully you can use these tips, put them to work for you, and catch some more fish. Guys, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. We appreciate you. Have a great day.